The CIA assassinated your first popular leader, Mr. Lumumba, and then installed another dictatorship for the next 30 years. And then Glencore and others now suck out your cobalt without giving you tax income. We don't reflect on that. We say, what's wrong with you? Why don't you govern properly? But let me just ask uh, Jeffrey Sachs uh, to help me in this reflection, because now the, the point, the key point here is also what the government leadership can do. And so uh, I'm going to ask him, uh, who's a well-known uh, well advisor, to uh, point out what can be done now in terms of leadership. Thank you very much. What we've been hearing is uh, how the system actually works right now. And I want to emphasize, we have a world food system. It's based on large multinational companies. It's based on private uh, profits. It's based on a very, very low measure of international transfers to help poor people, sometimes none at all. It's based on extreme irresponsibility of powerful countries with regard to the environment. And it's based on a radical denial of rights of poor people, as we just heard. It's interesting, we ask, we heard from the minister of DRC, What's wrong with your country? Well, we don't even start by saying the King of Belgium created a slave colony for 30 years. The government of Belgium ran the slave colony for another 40 years. The CIA assassinated your first popular leader, Mr. Lumumba, and then installed another dictatorship for the next 30 years. And then Glencore and others now suck out your cobalt without giving you tax income. We don't reflect on that. We say, what's wrong with you? Why don't you govern properly? And so we have a system, but we need a different system. <laughs> we cannot turn this over to the private sector. We already did about 100 years ago not only to the private sector, to the private sector with the U.S. military behind it. With the defense of these property rights in Mr. the Minister of Honduras's country, where United Fruit ran the country for a long time. And their attorney was the foreign minister of the United States, Secretary Dulles, and his brother was the head of the CIA and overthrew the next door neighbor, Mr. Arbenz, to make sure that United Fruit could have its property. So we have a system, but we need a different system. And the different system has to be based on principles of human dignity in the Universal Declaration, principles of sovereignty, principles of economic rights, because these are not nice things to do in 1948, all the government said that food is a right, social protection is a right, not a nice thing, not a pleasant thing, a right. That was 73 years ago. The SDGs are nothing more than our generation's attempt to honor the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I come from a country that not only doesn't care about the world's poor, it doesn't even care about its own poor. One in seven Americans is hungry right now. And they don't care. I mean, the, the poor people care, but one political party, all it cares about is cutting taxes for the rich and filibustering any solution. So we're in a world that's really tough. The private sector is not going to solve this problem. I'm sorry to say to all of the private sector leaders, Behave, pay your taxes, follow the rules. That's what you should do. And what the governments should do is the following. They won't, but they should. First, the G20 should become the G21 
by inviting systemically the chairperson of the African Union and the African Union to be the 21st country. The, 20, the European Union is a member of the G20 as the EU. If you add the AU as the 21st for the G21, you add 1.4 billion people to representation at that crucial event. That will change decisively the discussion because 1.4 billion people are not at the table for finance right now, and they need to be. So my first recommendation is the G21. I love the G20. Add one seat, 1.4 billion people with the AU represented. Second, we need a order of magnitude change of development finance. The rich countries just borrowed $17 trillion for COVID. The poor countries, nothing. Because the rich countries can borrow at zero and the poor countries pay five or 10% coupon rates or have no access at all. So the world exposed its grotesque inequality this past year and a half. Rich countries didn't say, we tighten our belts, why don't you? My country spent $7 trillion of emergency funding, not one penny for anybody else, by the way. Seven trillion, it didn't even cross the imagination of the US Congress to include a few crumbs for the rest of the world. But the poor countries cannot borrow. That's what we should have heard from the World Bank. I didn't hear that from the World Bank. I didn't hear real numbers. Real numbers are in trillions right now because the world economy is 100 trillion a year. But we don't talk about real numbers. But my job, all I know in this world is long division. Divide by 100 trillion and then see whether you're talking about something real or not. So that's the second thing. We need massively to increase the lending and borrowing capacity of poor countries at near zero interest rates like the rich countries have. Then they could get something done. By the way, for COVID vaccines, what we really need is for the United States to sit down with China, with Russia, with the European Union and the UK one day around the table and allocate these vaccines rather than hoarding them. That's all it would take. And then we're going to have national pathways. This is a wonderful idea, but they're gonna need financing. And so everything that I've been saying, I know the numbers, that's all I do for 40 years is add up what's missing. You want electricity, it has to be purchased. You want digital access, it has to be purchased. You want safe water, irrigation, it has to be purchased. This is what I do for a living is add up these numbers and then find out that then somebody makes up something and names one hundredth of what's really needed. It's not even hard. By the way, the IMF has done wonderful studies in the last two years showing that we have a financing gap of about 400 to 500 billion dollars a year for the basics for the SDGs. They show the gap, but they don't, nobody comes up with the number, the solution, which wouldn't be so hard because that's just not a big number. It's 0.5 of 1% of world output. So if we really care, we wouldn't have the G7 saying, we love education, therefore we're gonna give $3 billion for education. That's what they said at the summit. But what UNESCO has shown is that you need at least $30 billion a year, minimum. But nobody looks at numbers. They just make up nice check the box. So we need the real numbers of finance to back the national pathways. The final thing is we need the UN as the core and central institution of this world, period. Because this is the only way we're gonna have a civilized world is a strong UN. And it cannot be that the whole UN budget is less than my neighborhood's budget in New York. The UN core budget this year is $3 billion. 
New York City's budget is $100 billion. And then we say, why don't things work well? Because the rich are hoarding everything. Final point, rather than our three billionaires going in space, well, they could go into space and stay there and leave their money behind. That would be one idea. <laughs> but another Thanks. idea, another idea is we have 2,775 billionaires on the current list. Their combined net worth, 2,700, is 13.1 trillion dollars. Now I have it on good authority, you don't need more than a billion dollars to be comfortable. But they have an excess of 11 trillion dollars over just the one billion. So we should be taxing that and having a civilized world. Thank you. Jeffrey Sachs. This was Jeffrey Sachs setting the tone.